Hello folks, Florentine Santif here. Welcome to this King's Throne video, part 2 of the How to Correctly Build Heroes series. Correctly building your heroes is one of the most crucial aspects of the game, and in order to do so, you must be aware of many things that this series will try to teach you. There's a lot to cover, but also a lot to learn for the newer players, so I hope you enjoy it and if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to ask on the comments section. In this second part, we will focus on leveling your heroes, what you need to do so, how attributes are calculated and how leveling affects them. If you would rather blue one hero or green four, or if you should purple one or blue six, the theoretical path I would walk to level my heroes, and how you fight gold and investiture material roadblocks. Your heroes start at level 1, and can be raised up to level 500. For a long time, the cap was level 400, but recently this cap has been raised to 500. Since it is rather new, and also because going from level 400 to 500 require additional specific and rare items, only the biggest whales have been able to reach level 500 up to now, and only for one hero. That's why we will consider, in this video, level 400 as the soft cap of this game in its current state. To level up, the only thing you need is gold, and the higher the level, the higher the amount of gold needed. You can see on screen how much it costs for every 50 level, and you can find data for each level on King's Throne fan page. Should you be interested in such details, be sure to check the link on screen. To go from level 1 to 400, you will need between 3 and 4 billion gold for each hero. Starting at 100, and every 50 levels after that, your hero will meet a cap that can only be broken by giving him investiture material. Promoting a hero unlocks two things, his level limit is raised by 50, and their quality skill limit is also raised by 50. More on that when we'll discuss quality. Here are the different rank a hero will reach when promoting him. Each rank is linked to a color reflecting his maximum level, red for 150, yellow for 200, orange for 250, green for 300, blue for 350, and purple for 400. About investiture material, you will need one ring, one scepter and one sword of some sort for every investiture. This material can be crafted on the combine menu. Ruby ring, ruby scepter and ruby sword are the basic investiture material, it's the ones you need to raise level cap from 100 to 150. You can also combine them to craft higher ranks needed for higher investiture. For example, to craft material to raise cap from 150 to 200, you will need 3 ruby rings, 3 ruby scepters and 3 ruby swords. This quickly escalates, you'll then want 9 of each to orange a hero, then 36 to green him, then 180 to blue him, and finally 1080 of each to purple him. At first, Gold is the roadblock you'll meet when leveling heroes, you simply have to wait to collect more gold to level your hero's line. You will know that you've reached mid-game when gold is no more an obstacle, but rather investiture material. We will discuss that matter later in this video but for now, we'll look at what happens when a hero gains level. The result is an attribute increase for the hero, and thus a kingdom power increase. But how does it work? We will have to look at how attributes are calculated. Folks, it's time to grab an aspirin. If we look at a hero and his attribute score info, you can see that for each attribute, we have six subcategories, quality bonus, tome bonus, bond bonus, paragon bonus, rare beast bonus, and equipment bonus. There is a seven hidden one, enhancement bonus. Here's how each of them is calculated. Don't worry, we will analyze each of them in this series, but for today we're just going to look at how a level increase affects attribute score. Quality bonus seems to be the only one affected by level. But since bond bonus, paragon bonus and enhancement bonus all have quality bonus in their formula, a level increase will affect four subcategories. Quality bonus formula is approximately the following, attribute type quality score, times level, times level divided by 10. Here's an example, my John Hawkwood has 80 quality, his quality bonus score should be 80 times 300 times 300 divided by 10, which equals 720,000. If you look at his attributes, you can see that the sum of his four quality bonus scores equals 721,500, which is close enough. We don't need to go into more details to understand something important. When it comes to leveling, heroes with high quality will gain more than heroes with low quality. 
Since this calculation also affects bond bonus, paragon bonus and enhancement bonus, leveling a hero with a maiden, some paragons and or enhanced will grant better results. These conclusions are logical, but now you know why you should prioritize such heroes when choosing whom to level. Now what happens when you throw some investiture problematics into that? Say, for example, that gold is not a matter anymore, and you have enough investiture material to either upgrade 4 heroes to green or 1 to blue. What should you do? The answer isn't clear, because it also depends on many factors. Do these heroes have a maiden? Some paragons? Are they enhanced? From a theoretical point of view, leveling one hero from 300 to 350 will boost his attributes by 3250 times his quality. Leveling one from 250 to 300 will net 2750 times his quality, but there are four of them. This means that if the hero you wish to blue has a quality that is at least 85% of the sum of the four heroes you want to green, you should be bluing instead of greening. If not, then greening is the way to go. But remember that maiden bonds, paragons and enhancement should also be taken into consideration. This is the same matter when considering upgrading one hero to purple or six to blue, you can apply the same reasoning as the numbers are fairly close to those before. Go purple if quality of said hero is at least 85% of the sum of those six heroes quality. From my personal point of view, here is how I would do things. I would try to build four heroes stronger than the others, one of each type between military, fortune, provision and inspiration. Up to 350, I would always keep them 50 levels above the rest, then upgrade the others. That is, those four goes to 300 first, then I would upgrade all the others to 250. When done, I would level my top four to 350, then upgrade the others to 300. Now from here I would balance the team a little bit, quality-wise, to be more competitive for tourneys, and would blue 8 to 12 heroes before going back to my top four and make them purple. After that, everybody goes up to 350, and when done, all is left is to purple every hero one by one. As stated before, in the early game you will lack of gold and this is what will slow you down when growing up your team. As such, I would recommend focusing on that aspect early on, by building a decent fortune hero. As you now know if you have watched the first part of this series, baseline heroes are not exactly the best heroes in the game, but you really have no choice, unless you want to spend a few hundred dollars right away on the shop to get Louise and some paragon tokens. Let's say you don't, and I can't blame you for that, what do you do? Well, I would work on building Marcelo, because he's not that bad. He has a 5 star fortune quality skill and a given maiden, Isabella, who can easily boost his fortune attribute from the beginning. As you grow your kingdom, focus on trying to grab a fortune heroic maiden to switch as fast as possible to her. Prime choice is Louise, obviously, but getting Diana or any other maiden with some kind of fortune paragon is a viable alternative. Also remember that round table and legendary heroes have a paragon bonus that goes up to 50% on all attributes, assuming you have one of them, fully built and enhanced, it's actually pretty decent to give him fortune quality while waiting for an heroic maiden. You will eventually come to the point where investiture material will become a problem. Remember how I told you to try to have a compact line of heroes? This will also help you with that, because the less heroes you have, the less investiture material you will need. Try to grab ruby rings, scepters and swords wherever you can as soon as possible, because they ever won't be wasted. This means you should try to compete on challenges and events. Do as much kingdom expeditions as possible on castle 2 and 8. Make your daily alliance contribution and fight alliance bosses to exchange points for material. Fight harbor waves and boss daily to exchange points for material. And progress as much as you can each week with weekly quests. Note that if you do kingdom expeditions on regular basis, you will end up with a pile of unused swords. This is because sword quests tend to pop more often, especially on Castle 8. As such, don't waste exchange points on swords, but rather on rings or scepters, depending on what you need. And that wraps up the second part of this series. You now know everything there is to know about leveling, and you should now make correct decisions about it. In the next episode, we will tackle a complex but extremely important subject, raising quality. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, please leave a positive comment or click on the like button. Thank you for watching, and I hopefully will see you around next time. Bye bye.